back. It's been a minute. Haven't posted any updates in, what, two years, three years? I think 2020 was the last time uh, I uploaded anything to YouTube. So a lot has gone on in that time, as I'm sure a lot of people watching this probably know me personally or have seen on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. So uh, we'll just get right into it and update. First thing is going to be updating about the shop. So, so show what's up. So you probably saw from the inside, looks a lot different than the previous videos. It's because it is a brand new building. I'm going to go inside and talk more about it because it's windy out here, but I want to at least show off the outside. And what's up? Have a lean-to here that's full of junk still. Let me clean that up. But head in and show it off. Uh, like uh, I said, a lot has gone on. December 17th, 2021, the week before Christmas. Uh, the old shop burned to the ground. Uh, it's a Friday night and a Kubota tractor parked outside actually caught on fire and burned down the shop and everything in it. Uh, thankfully the thing, green bus, Westy and double cab were spared. They were parked in a lean-to and actually pulled them out while the building was on fire. But otherwise, literally everything I had got burned up. So that uh, is kind of a downer. Fortunately, our house didn't burn down. It was close. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Very fortunately, uh, firefighters were all safe. Family was safe. All that good stuff. Um, very fortunate for that. So it was just junk. A lot of it, a lot of stuff that I didn't want to burn up, obviously. You know, nobody wants their stuff to burn up, but it is what it is. And so we had to start over. Um, did a lot of dirt work, raised up this whole back here. Back side of this shop, we raised up uh, approximately 30 inches, 32 inches, something like that. This whole area. Um, had to move all that dirt around and then proceeded to put up a building. So thanks to a bunch of good friends that helped me out, we uh, started over. So I'll talk about the building first and then uh, give a brief update on all the cars, I guess. So the building itself is 40 feet wide, 50 feet deep and 14 feet tall. Um, it's a VersaTube. Uh, I wanted to do red iron, but that just would have blown my budget completely. This building blew my budget completely. Um, the old building that was here was 24 by 36, and it actually was a pole barn that I had taken down and moved here and put up myself. And it was underinsured a lot. So I went way over my budget, but I figured if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, spend the money, built literally the biggest build, but literally the biggest building that would fit here. Our lots, all hills, trees, and with setbacks and everything, I put up literally the biggest building that would fit. So 40, 50 with a 12 foot lean to on a 50 foot side out there. And as I'm sure you can see, Spray foam insulation, the whole inside. Uh, three inches on the ceiling closed cell, two inches on the walls closed cell, which I'm hoping will keep it nice and toasty in here. I always had trouble heating the other shop. It was just, it was thrown together out of a bunch of stuff. So it was, it was drafty, didn't have much heat, didn't have much insulation. So this I'm hoping is going to be a lot better for that. Um, like I said, it's a VersaTube. So, 
A lot of people see VersaTube when they associate with carport. Same style of construction, but a lot heavier duty. So all of the walls are two by four, 14 gauge, and trusses as well are the same dimensions. Five feet on center, and then actually my siding, as you can see in the outside, the siding is vertical rather than horizontal. So there are wall purlins as well, which help with the structure and tie everything together. So it's a pretty stout building. Uh, the week after it was assembled, before it was spray foamed, we got 70 plus mile an hour winds. A tornado passed two miles away. Building was fine. And now that it's spray foamed, it's a lot more rigid. So pretty happy with it. Like I said, I want to do red iron, but it would have been two and a half times as much probably. So that's the main structure. Like I said, spray foamed. Did two doors on the front, uh, 10 by 10, 12 by 12, insulated, openers, all stuff I didn't have before. So again, spent a lot more than I wanted to. Had to scrimp and save and sell stuff and, you know, really worked to get it to happen, but got the actual structure paid for no problem. So that's the building. That's where we are. LED high bay lights through the whole thing. Exhaust fan back there. Actually hanging up a heater uh, tomorrow to start heating the thing. So then I'll start showing what I've filled it up with tool wise to start replacing everything I lost. So tool wise, start with Darko, Diarco, Diarco. 48 inch press brake. I'm not sure how many ton it is. I actually bought this the week before the building burned down and hadn't picked it up yet. It was still sitting in the warehouse, hadn't been picked up. Super fortunate with that. So moved it in about three weeks ago, got it fired up and working. Pretty awesome brake. Picked up some filing cabinets from Ohio State Surplus. Pretty inexpensive and excellent storage. Pretty cool setup. And look forward to filling those up. I'll probably buy maybe three more to put down this wall. I'm also going to sheet this wall like how the other one is. I'm going to sheet all the walls so that the foam is protected. And then I have this server rack that I'm planning on turning into storage for... Uh, individual totes glass bead blaster from harbor freight not that great wouldn't recommend buying it probably going to upgrade that already bailey mag brake i always wanted one of these and my finger brake obviously was ruined so bit the bullet spent some extra money and picked up the mag brake really glad i did awesome awesome machine can do so much stuff with it this combined with the press brake is just amazing for fabrication. And then blah, blah, blah. Kids don't wreck the track. I looked at a lot of options for toolboxes and decided to go with multiple carts just because each one can be organized different. And obviously they're not organized yet. I'm still going through all that. Main cart, you have, you know, your normal everyday work on stuff tools. Thought this would be the best option because each cart could be rolled around. I have such a big space and so much stuff I do. I don't want to have one box and make multiple trips. So for efficiency, decide to go that way. So new tube bender got super fortunate and found a guy selling this on Facebook for way under what they retail new, like a seventh of what a new one cost. Really awesome unit made in America. 180 degree bend in one shot. Uh, unfortunately, the only dies that I got with it are for pipe. So we're gonna make some tube dies for it because tube dies are something like 12 weeks out and 12 to $1,400 a piece. So gonna go ahead and just try to engineer my own. And then like I said, fan up there, heater was going right here in the back and it'll blow towards the front. And then I'm planning on putting some ceiling fans up. Uh, put up a two-post tuxedo lift. 
pretty happy that I now have a clear floor. My old lift had the cables on the floor and it was always a pain in the butt rolling anything in and out. Always hard to clean around. So got that up. Very stoked with that. Um, welder wise, I decided to go with the Miller Matic, uh, the Multi Matic, I'm sorry, for Miller. So multi process machine, MIG TIG stick. Really awesome machine. Again, you pay up for it, but it's worth it. And then I just bought a Harbor Freight cart for it because I didn't have time to mess with other stuff. So, and then bought a new Spark Robotic 4x8 plasma table. This is a twin to my old plasma table that I had. Super happy with Spark. There's a powder coat cart in the way blocking everything, but super happy with Spark. Spark Robotic is awesome. If you're ever looking at a plasma table, highly recommend talking to them. Customer service is top notch. I called them two days after I had the fire, explained what happened. They rushed out a table to me and actually gave me a discount as well because I had bought a table already and they're just good people. So, and then the cart has all of my PC that controls the table and everything. I just threw in another cheapo cart. Fidal CNC three axis mill, just like the press break. I bought both of this and the press break at the same time, hadn't picked them up yet, got super fortunate. And actually, this tote of license plates, that was the only thing that survived the fire. They were in the bottom of a filing cabinet with rags in the drawer above. Those rags got soaked with water from the firefighters and saved those license plates. So literally the only thing that survived the fire was these license plates. So. And they are kind of sentimental. A lot of them were my wife's grandpa's. So kind of cool that I didn't lose those. I lost a lot of stuff that's irreplaceable, but not going to cry about it. So cheapo Harbor Freight welding table. Let's get through until I can build a fixture table. Um, powder coat cart reset back up. Then it's very storage. Banners from West Side Dandies. First things going up. Uh, powder coat oven. I lucked out and picked this up from Ohio State Surplus. Dirt cheap. Got real lucky with that. Harbor Freight hose reel. Air compressor. Again, I was thinking I would try to find something big. An industrial. Ran out of time. Went back with the old, old DeWalt that relatively inexpensive. If it poops, I can replace it easy. So for now, that's what I'm doing. All PEX Airlines went with a three-quarter inch trunk line, which has taken away any issues I've ever had with plasma cutting now because I have plenty of air going and then in the corner up there is a refrigerated air dryer um, we brought in 200 amp service from a disconnect where the power comes into the property so everything here is on its own power supply completely separate from the house so I'm not pulling you know even with everything on it's not pulling that much much amperage but still I wanted to keep everything separate so Kept everything separate. So, and also cool desk I bought from Ohio State that eventually will hopefully be up above here. My future plan is to build a mezzanine down this side and close the plasma table to evacuate any smoke or whatever and then put an office up top. So that's a quick once over on the building. So I'll give an update on all the cars and not go too in depth but basically lay out what's up with them all right so i'll start by talking about the stuff that you already know double cab like i said was in the front lean to while the building was on fire i pulled it out while the place was burning down because i wasn't going to lose it and so got it out it sat for quite a while because obviously the building was gone i had a lot more fish to fry finally pulled it out in august at our Volksfest. Brakes fell apart coming home, so swapped in some disc brakes on the front. Um, my dude Chaz hooked me up with a little more aggressive tire, just to, I wanted to beef it up a little bit. And I have a diesel heater up top right now to heat my tent. So, some upgrades coming for this this winter. Nothing major. Uh, probably going to go with a little bit bigger engine to push all this weight down the road and swap in fuel injection so 
Yellow bus, this thing's been around forever. I've had it since I was four years old, which was a long time ago. And this is now Wyatt's bus, a 10 year old son's bus. And we'll be starting restoration on it here because I mean, he's 10, he's gonna be driving and you know how restorations go. So gonna get started on that this winter probably. Take it all down, get it blasted, replace everything that's bad and build just an awesome first driver for him. So there's that. Overland bus. No changes since before. Uh, still has the two liter and three rib in it. Big, big plans for this bus. I'm gathering parts. Don't want to let the cat out of the bag until I have everything and I know it's going to work. But lots going to change from the original plan for this bus to make it more capable, easier to drive, more reliable. I want to drive this bus to California is my plan. So that's what's up with that. Thing, also, zero change. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it at all this winter. I would like to so that we can cruise it next year. It doesn't need much to be drivable. So we'll see. But as of now, still sitting here. So that's all the stuff that you all have already seen. So I'm sure you noticed a few more cars in the background. First off, Samurai. I lucked into, I've wanted to find another Samurai. I've had a bunch of them. I don't know if you followed these things, but prices have gotten ridiculous. So locked into a friend that was selling this and just went for it, bought it, came with bumpers. I threw the winch on, came almost exactly as you see it. Uh, I'm going to beef it up a little bit with a little more power, a little more tire, a little more axle, which I have all that stuff already. It's just a matter of putting it all in. Uh, cage it out with the bender so that it's safe for the kids to ride in. I have a UTV rear seat that I picked up that we will be cutting for harnesses, full cage, and I wanted to buy a side-by-side -side, but decided that this was way cooler and also <laughs> a quarter of the price. So this will be coming up. A lot of stuff going on with this. And it's very budget build. I mean, hoping to not have hardly anything in putting this thing together and making it awesome. So that's that. Up on the lift, Fox body, 86 Mustang. This is my midlife crisis mobile. I drove one of these in high school, 86 Mustang LX 5.0 and have been hunting a suitable replacement for it for several years. Lucked into a friend who had purchased this car 19 years ago. It's actually his high school car. And finally decided to sell it. It was an automatic five liter car. Uh, he had started doing an engine swap and kind of lost interest and it was just sitting torn apart. So I bought it. Very solid car. Very, very solid car. Like. For being in the Midwest, no rust. I mean, you know, surface rust, obviously, but no, you know, solid towers. Very, very solid car. So, plan for this thing right now is I have an 89, just roller stock motor, throwing long tubes on it. Has a few odds and ends done to it, but nothing big. Tossing it in there with Mega Squirt and this dude, TKX Trimix. Trimic? The new uh, TKO replacement. So that will be going in this car to start. And then down the road, um, the plan is to take the original 86 engine that came out of it. Probably a light stroke, 331, maybe a 347 supercharger. And make this into a... 500-ish horsepower streetcar that'll still be reliable, fun to drive, be able to do like a drag and drive event if I want, or, you know, just have a cool cruiser that's nostalgic to me because I love it. So uh, that's that. I already have a lot of the parts for it. So it'll be together with a stock engine in the next couple weeks. Be doing some videos on that. And then hopefully over the winter, I can gather up enough parts to build the stroker, uh, 
not real sure still researching the exact combo i want to do so but that's that back here 78 margai panther or margay panther go-kart uh bought that at volksfest last year for troy my seven-year-old uh he and i will be putting that together with the uh, harbor freight predator motor this winter and hopefully doing a little bit of kart racing there's some local private tracks and hopefully we can hit some of those next year with that cart various dirt bikes there are the kids around here uh the only other thing is this jeep and i'm going to keep that under wraps right now it's just a jk body and i got something cool planned for it but i don't want to blow the blow the lid on that one just yet so it's just sitting here for right now it's going to be a long-term project probably won't see anything about this this year so but just had to address it because it's sitting here so that pretty much covers everything i know my eyes are always bigger than my stomach so i don't expect half of the stuff to be done but I will be updating. That's part of the reason why I'm posting YouTube again is to keep myself accountable again. Now I have this awesome shop space. I have all these tools and hopefully it will be back to generating enough income to be able to dump some money into these cars. I know the whole point is supposed to be low budget, but I'm still gonna do it low budget, but it still costs money even doing a low budget. I mean, the days of building a $500 500 horsepower streetcar way behind us. So uh, that's about it. Going to try to upload twice a week, maybe more often as I make progress on stuff. Again, keep myself accountable, show off some of the stuff, document what's going on, and hopefully you all dig it. So thanks for watching. Welcome back. And I hope that you all follow along and check out all the rest of the stuff. Till then, catch you later.